Howdy-o, what do you know, this is Rabbit of Scrublead Academy, and one day we are back in Dungeons & Dragons Online, and that day is today, and this is the Feywild, and this will be the first time we've actually gone into the Feywild to hunt out, well, anything from the Monster Manual. So today what I'm hunting out are fiendish lions, because the Feywild has taught me something really interesting about these creatures. Feywild cats are extremely common in one of those dungeons, pretty much overturning what I initially thought. Ooh, nice rare. Let's take him down. And his little tree. Pretty much obsoleting one of the areas I would normally have gone to deal with these things. And that is the Maze of Madness in Giant Hold. That would have been my common place to go before. But I actually think that they might be here in greater numbers. So why don't we just go ahead and check it out? And interestingly enough, the best place I have found in the Feywild to farm these creatures is actually the Endless Revels, and I'll sort of show you what I mean by that. So here we are in the entrance, wonderful, wonderful entrance, but the only place you really need to go is right here. Because you have one, two, three, four, five Feywild cats right in this first room, along with a Displacer Beast. But you clean sweep through them, and you have five kills, 15 seconds maybe to get here. And that's if you don't really know your way, maybe 15 seconds. Race back out and reset, probably another 15. So that's five kills every 30 or 10 kills a minute, which isn't all that bad considering that all you really need are 1,600 of these little beasties right here. So as I've just barely begun the Feywild stuff, I've already got 78 kills for Feywild cats just on this character alone. It's very interesting, honestly, because you could go ahead, recall, reset, heroic, elite, and you're back into the dungeon. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, not too much to worry about there, and they're all really close proximity so you don't have to go searching for them. So honestly, in terms of just farmability, that's probably the best place to go. And every single time I've come in here, it's always been the same, so I'm assuming these are a static group. They always spawn the same way. Five cats, easy kills, and right there. And then you can just go ahead and immediately raise out. Kills per minute, I think this is probably the best you're going to do, honestly. And I didn't expect that Feywild would bring something out like this that was pretty helpful for us. But there you have it. Really easy, really quick. A recall, reset, head right back in, and you are good to go. And as I say, you could just keep on going, keep on farming these out. There's nothing to worry about here. And just get all those guys and race back out. It'll probably take you less time to race out than to detour or just to recall. You'll be able to get right out of there and do it all over again. Fiendish Lions, really, really quick surprisingly quick and honestly probably won't take you all that much effort to do it see we're already at 1050 out of 1600 and kind of just barely begun so not bad at all now mind you you will be running that several times but just to fill out the last couple hundred on your character probably won't take you more than 25 to 30 runs of those not too difficult honestly when it only takes 30 seconds maybe for an entire run and if you've got an area effect you could probably do it in 20, honestly, let's be real. You could just walk in there, AoE, blast everything, and come right back out. So that's the first part of today's video that I wanted to show, but the second part is a little different because I don't really have anything to combine these two together with other than just the fact that they're magical beasts, but I think we want to go into where to find purple worms next just to see what we can do and get them out of the way. So I'm going to head right over there. And we are here for our purple worms. Now these are not super easy to farm out, but luckily all you need are 160 of these beasties. I think that might actually be the fewest you need of any creature in the game. So we're going into Desire in the Dark. Uh, I tend to do this quest beyond In the Belly of the Beast because it's so much easier. We could just skip by all of these guys, because we're not super concerned about that. I want one Drider kill, so we'll help him along. There we go, he's gone. Zoom straight through all of this. By the gods, alrighty. Well, yep. So we do need to talk to them, and that just gets us through here. So it does take some getting there. Right now we're just killing off some gold piles, and there we go. 
Don't really want to bother touching the piles of wealth. They can have all that stuff. What we need to do is just go straight through here and activate these. And as soon as we're done with that, this door will open and we will slowly make our way out of here. Well, actually, we could do this a lot quicker if we just go, go, go with our speed boost and we will run straight forward. So we're almost there. We've got one more section and then it's where we need to be. And enough of your tricks, shapeshifter. So we'll get rid of him and we need to wait for this guy. All right, so we talked to him and we need to wait for him to just go through his many forms, which honestly, this is one of the coolest parts of the whole dungeon is just sort of watching him transform into all these different characters that we came across in the previous dungeons and just sort of toy with us, really. It's kind of interesting, honestly. I really like seeing this guy play it out. Alrighty, so now we're here, and we need to go through this. Get a few succubi in here as well. It's not a terrible location to farm them. It's not the best location, honestly. But we're really just looking in common areas to see if we can find a mirror of sorts so that we can get through this maze. And there we are, right there. Nice little mirror. We'll leave those two alone, because now we are here. It doesn't take too, too long to get here, but it is a bit of time. Now here are our wormlings, so we get rid of these guys. That's what we're hunting. There should be five of them in here. Really cool. You can go. And we know he's wandering over here, so we'll just go ahead and grab him. Honestly, I would say some of the coolest creatures in the whole game. Fiendish wormlings, or just purple worms in general. Oh, never mind, not five, six of them. There are six of them in here. I kind of forgot about that. I always thought there was five. I guess I've killed through this place a little too quickly before. But there go all six of them. You can still hear the ground churning with them, so that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Oh, it's because we found number seven. Nice. Let's get rid of them. Alrighty. So seven more purple worms. Let's check it out in our manual here, just to make absolutely sure. Yes, so there are actually seven of them here. I did not know that. I thought there were... I came in here thinking there were five, but there are seven. This makes this place even better. A nice little surprise to have. A nice little surprise. Anyway, seven per run. 160 are necessary. So really, about, uh, we'll say 23 runs, you'll have everything you need from start to finish. And that's if you don't already have any purple worms at all. So 23 runs is not too, too bad for a couple minutes per run. I would argue these guys are pretty much a cakewalk. I haven't even tried to get them, and I've already got a decent number of these guys just right off the bat. So remember, when we're farming these, we're not super concerned about the quest itself. So this isn't really a big deal. What you're really looking for are just these creatures, just in the monster manual. So you just want to race to the area that you can find them best and just disintegrate them. And then recall and reset. And that's really the name of the game here. Unless you're sitting around with a guard item, which to be fair, are you even playing at that point? It's one of those things you can go in, farm a few off, it's not really something that you would have to farm continually. You don't have to spend your, your next two hours in each of these dungeons. I wouldn't recommend that either. Probably be super boring to you. But if you're just waiting for something else to happen, you can probably just farm out a couple of them, a couple of decent runs in a few minutes while you're waiting for somebody else to join you. And you'll get them before you know it, honestly. It's actually pretty easy to farm out a lot of these creature types if you're just casually dedicated to it as well. Obviously, the more time you spend on it, the more you're going to get out of it. But you can casually grind them and just get a few here and there, and you'll probably augment what you need with just the rest of your dungeon experience and a couple of past lives. That being said, I think that's pretty much all the time we have for this one. If you enjoyed, leave a comment. I love to hear what you've got to say. If you have anything that you wanted to add, any better areas that you would farm these things out, any purple worms or fiendish lions or just whatever you wish, whatever video you might be watching, anywhere else, I'd love to get that discussion rolling. And if you just want to say something, I mean, I'm always game to have a good conversation too. That being said, I'm going to get up out of here, and I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you later. Alrighty, bye bye for now.